What's going on, everyone? I think it's a good day to talk about Berkshire Hathaway. What do you think? Let's take a look. Berkshire Hathaway, how did it get so expensive and what is its history? What is the strategy? Let's go ahead and find out. So, of course, uh, Berkshire Hathaway was founded in the 19th century, not as one, but two separate Massachusetts cotton mills, Berkshire Fine Spinning Associates and Hathaway Manufacturing. The two companies ended up merging in 1955 to become Berkshire Hathaway, and in 1965, Warren Buffett and his investment firm came in to purchase and take full control of the struggling company. Under his leadership, Berkshire Hathaway became one of the world's biggest holding companies. And on a side note, we all know that in the bond scandals of Salomon Brothers in the early 90s, late 80s, Berkshire Hathaway was called into that company as well to basically take over the corrupted company and quote unquote regulate it. And of course, we all know that they were the underwriters for GameStop and expanded on a global front and control a lot of things that we use today as far as in the markets. But anyways, back to the Berkshire Hathaway. A holding company is a company that owns part, a majority, or all of another company's stock with the sole purpose of owning another company's stock. A parent holding company refers to a company that owns enough stock in another company to control the election of its board of directors. And here's an example right here on the screen for you. So Holdings LLC is the example company name. And they obviously invest in active business, intellectual property, high liability assets, investment property, you know, some of which may have nothing to do with the conglomerate itself, which is the next term we're going to talk about. Buffett officially made Berkshire Hathaway a conglomerate purchasing national indemnity, the first of what would become many insurance acquisitions for the company, while distancing itself from the original textile industry by liquidating those assets completely. Warren Buffett bought into it in the 1960s and turned it into a conglomerate in 1967. He used the textile proceeds to buy national indemnity. It was the first of many insurance company purchases that provided Berkshire with the means to make more acquisitions. So he was able to make more acquisitions of company by doing what he likes to do best. And uh, he uses float. Now this is not the same as the free float of what you're thinking most likely. But this is any money paid to Berkshire Hathaway's insurance subsidiaries and premiums, but has yet to be used to cover any claims. This money, also referred to as available reserve, doesn't actually belong to the insurance company. Instead, it remains on hand to be invested as its managers or its, as its managers see fit. The company's float, not free float, was 138 billion in 2020, not only one of the largest in the world, but more than 3,000 times what it was in 1970. Berkshire used to float money for its purchases. That's money paid to Berkshire's insurance companies and premiums that have yet to be paid out to cover claims. Technically, the money doesn't belong to the insurance companies and it's available to be invested as the manager sees fit. So it's invested to see, you know, how the manager sees fit. So obviously, after that, the company expanded its holdings to include other insurance companies as well as those in the financial clothing, entertainment, food and beverage, utilities, furniture, household products, media, and materials, and construction industries. Interesting. So a financial conglomerate provides uh, financial insurance and banking services. The companies generally have a major presence in those segments. A conglomerate is a corporation made up of different unrelated businesses. And we have an example here on the right. So if we take a few examples of what they have as, uh, you know, for their subsidiaries, we conclude that amongst the many that they have, we have Geico, Dairy Queen, Fruit of the Loom, and Duracell, just to name a few, as well as Benjamin Moore Pilot Travel Centers. So filling these examples into the actual example, you can see that these are the subsidiaries, and those make up Berkshire Hathaway being the conglomerate. It allows Berkshire Hathaway to quickly purchase temporarily wounded companies and breathe life back into them. That's exactly what it did. With Fruit of the Loom, Berkshire purchased the struggling clothing company for a mere $835 million in 2002 after its stock lost 97% of its value. So there you go. Berkshire's float of $77 billion is the world's largest and 50 times what it was a generation ago. It lets Berkshire quickly buy temporarily wounded companies and then revive them. Fruit of the Loom was purchased for $835 million in 2002 after its stock had fallen 97% is a good example. 
Meanwhile, many Fortune 500 companies in which Berkshire owns positions pay steady dividends. Buffett advocates investing in companies that pay dividends. But despite that, he himself gives none to Berkshire's investors. Well, how about that? <laughs> Hypocrite. Just kidding. In essence, since a single share of Berkshire Hathaway Class A stock is equivalent to several years worth of the average American salary, it's no wonder that the shares trade infrequently, anywhere from 400 to 3,000 shares change hands a day. Buffett has never entertained the notion of a Class A split, as doing so could encourage speculation. Huh. And by the way, their free float of their stock is less than 1 million shares. So, what doing? Don't know. Maybe there's more to look into here. Although the video coverage was provided by Investopedia.com, I'd go recommend checking this article out. It's a very good read. Um, but I think there's a little bit more to this, and it's time to grab shovel and dig. Very good. Hope you enjoyed this. To end. <laughs>